Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Super upbeat conversation here regarding defensive tackles for LSU football. We understand the dire need that LSU is in for high-level defensive tackles. It is far and away the Achilles heel of this football roster at this point. And so LSU put the full court press on for Dominic Williams, put the full court press on for Simeon Barrow, and those two have announced their intentions to go elsewhere. Dominic Williams headed to Norman to play for the Sumers, Simeon Barrow going down to South Beach to play for Miami. So those guys had logged a lot of snaps at a pretty high level at quote unquote power five schools in Michigan State and TCU. That's where LSU needed to go to land some of these guys. And unfortunately, as we sit here on the 6th of May, you don't have anybody that you've brought in outside of Gio Paez at the defensive tackle spot. And Paez was really an edge player at Wisconsin who's going to shift inside here in Baton Rouge. So the question is, like, where else do you go? Like, the transfer portal's got a bajillion players in it, but are you just grabbing a guy to grab a guy? Or are you going to get somebody that's going to be a difference maker on your team? If you look at on three and you look through best available players on the defensive line, you, you see some names that we've talked about over the last few weeks. The first is Aiden Huntington. Aiden Huntington is a ULM product, played up there in the 318, and had a really nice year for ULM. 16 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks. Like that's, that's productive stuff. But he's six feet tall and 260 pounds. That is fine in the fun belt. I just don't know if that works in the Southeastern Conference. That's 40 pounds lighter than most defensive tackles play at. And that's just not an insignificant amount of weight. And again, I'm not a professional scout. I'm not a defensive line coach. Like, I, I don't know. It just seems to me like that's a bit of a reach. Anthony Dunn is another guy that's undersized. 6'4", 250 pounds from Florida A&M. He had eight sacks and 12 tackles for loss, but that's that's in the swack. I just don't know if that's the water that LSU needs to be fishing in. C.J. West is a name we've talked about a good bit. Kent State product, 6'2", 305 pounds. He was productive for them last year, made 50 tackles, had seven tackles for loss, and he's got the size that you would look at. Now, does the translation from the MAC to the SEC work? I don't know. That's probably a guy I'd be willing to take a flyer on. Now, if you've paid any attention to C.J. West and what he's done, it sounds like that's a guy who's looking for some NIL compensation. And... He's not going to be available to join your roster until August. He's got work to do academically, and it would be a very late ad. Now, is that the end of the world? No, it's not. And That's a guy I'd absolutely be looking at if I were LSU. There are some other guys from some higher-level schools that haven't been active, really. Talking about Curtis Perry from Alabama, who's six foot two, 267 pounds. Thomas Gore from Miami, six feet tall, 280. Johnny Bowens at Oregon, that's more of an edge player at 6'2", 250. So it's it's kind of an either-or thing. It's the lower-level player that's been super productive or the high-level player who hasn't played. The guys who were the high-level players that have played are off the board. So LSU, I, I don't know if I'd call it scramble mode, I don't know what the tenor is over there, but I can tell you that as this thing is constituted right now, it's it's dire. And as I continue to go through these names, whether it's Aiden Huntington, Anthony Dunn, CJ West, Curtis Perry, Thomas Gore, Johnny Bowens, like I, I continue to go through those, is there any evidence that those guys are better players than Dominic McKinley? Because LSU literally has defensive tackles. You've got about seven of them. The issue is not like just, just solely numbers. It's the talent level 
the productivity level that isn't there for this group, I think. And I just don't know if bringing a guy in from Florida A&M or ULM is going to make things any better. See what I'm saying? Like, bringing in a warm body, yeah, it's better than an empty chair, I guess. But is it going to make any impact? It just it feels like as we sit here, and I don't recall a situation like this in the past. Maybe at linebacker, right when Dave Aranda got here, remember the famous quote where Dave Aranda is looking at Les Miles on a plane, they're going recruiting, he says, Coach, we have more punters on the roster than linebackers. Like that got that got to a, a rough spot. But I don't recall a situation where from the outside, all of us who cover the team, all of us who who pull for the team, the fans, like Everybody is looking at defensive tackle and going, uh, this is not great. Like, I don't recall that situation arising at any other position. It's just been such a combination of transfer portal, early draft entries, guys not panning out. There are so many things that go into it, but all of us are sitting here looking at it going, this is not awesome. And it feels like when we sit here at SEC Media Days in July, and then when we get into preseason camp in August, like I feel like we're going to be talking more about defensive tackle than any position on the field. And I don't recall that ever really being the case with LSU's football roster. I feel like it's always been pretty fairly balanced. Sometimes you have a spring where you're light on running back numbers or you don't have the corners that you were looking to have. That, that can happen sometimes in the spring, but... It feels like we're going to go into the fall here looking at defensive tackle going, that's what we're sending out there? It's a tough spot. And you really felt like that in the air of the transfer portal, they could address this with some of these big names that jumped in. And now we sit here as things are kind of slowing down and you're going, well, so we'll see if CJ West is the guy that LSU can pull in. We'll see if they can evaluate some of these guys at a lower level and see who can help. But nobody else is going into the transfer portal because that window has closed. Now you see the guys that are in there, they don't have any sort of deadline on when they have to move or when they do move. But LSU's got to figure something out. We'll see what Brian Kelly, Bo Davis, and company can make happen. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.